Good morning, Silom family, friends, and all those watching from across the globe. Welcome to Silom Word of Truth Center. Hope that you enjoy this morning with us. Be blessed. Like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today. Faithful you have been. Faithful you will be, you pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You, Father, the orphan. Whole. And you shoulder our weakness, and your strength becomes our own. Now you're making me like you, clothing me in white, bring beauty from ashes, for you will have your bride, free of all her gifts. I heard your name, and it's why I sing your praise. Will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. That you're pleased and that I'm 
never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide us, you know just what we need before we say. Well, thank you again for choosing to do church with us here at Siloam Word of Truth Sandton, for bringing us into your home and into your space. It is always such a privilege and an excitement for us to know that we can still connect with you and fellowship in our Sunday worship experience together. I have a younger son. His name is Cairo. When Cairo was little, he was known as a hugger. And what I mean by that is that he was very generous in his embrace of people. He would hug almost anyone who was in the room, people he had met for the first time even. But there was something very unique about Cairo's embrace. It was an embrace that came from little arms, but was full of genuineness. An embrace from him would leave you feeling calm, yet strengthened at the same time. Many in our family would attest, as well as those in our church circles, following a Sunday morning worship, he would run off to find somebody special to him that he could gift 
with an embrace that would just lift them up for the morning. How great it is to have people like that in our lives. People who when they show up, you are left feeling better. You are left feeling strengthened. When you find people like that, you find yourself in great company. And one such person I would like to talk about today is the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit is one who is so great that when you're in His presence, you are strengthened and will certainly find yourself in great company. I speak specifically of the Holy Spirit today because the church finds itself approaching that time on our calendar to celebrate the day of Pentecost. And we revere, honor and recognize His activity at the time in Acts chapter 2 and throughout the book of Acts when Pentecost broke out and the power of God was made evident and manifest in the earth through the workings of the Holy Spirit. So I want to draw your attention to pieces of scripture as we consider who he is and learn how to take advantage of the opportunity of a relationship with him today. Let's go first to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse number 14. Paul here is closing his letter to the Corinthian church and he writes down this statement. He says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, and the communion or fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I want to emphasize that word communion, the word fellowship in some translations. In the Greek, the original language that the text was written, that word communion is the word koinonia. It is a word that speaks of a partnership, a relationship in which there is a coming together a contributory relationship, a spiritual fellowship. And what do we mean by a contributory relationship? It means that in the relationship there is synergy. There is an exchange from one party to the other. Now in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, it is unlikely that we have anything to offer that could make Him of greater value or make Him stronger than He is. Because the Holy Spirit is indeed God. So what is it that we can bring into this relationship, this fellowship, this communion with Him that makes it worth it for Him to fellowship with us? I thought about that for a few moments and considered that perhaps the only thing we can bring is an attitude or a mindset of surrender. When we fellowship and commune with the Holy Spirit, we can bring ourselves to a place of surrender because our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So firstly, we bring a physical surrender. We belong to Him because we have been purchased through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and He resides on the inside of us. So we come with an attitude of surrender, recognizing that we belong to Him, that He resides in us. And then we can surrender those circumstances and situations that are outside of our control. Those things that make us feel as though we can't do anything about it. Makes us feeling weaker, without an ability to overcome perhaps. So why is it that we can surrender circumstances that are outside of our control to the Holy Spirit? In enjoying this koinonia or communion and fellowship with Him, we must understand who it is we're engaging with. And the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26, helps us with this. Jesus, speaking here in this text, says to us that the Father, in the name of Jesus, will send us one who is a helper. That word helper may be translated advocate, one who speaks on our behalf. May be translated teacher, and Jesus says he's a teacher, Jesus said. He's a comforter. The word Helper in the Greek is the word parakletos. It means one who is called to aid. In other words, he comes alongside us to strengthen and support us. And that's the thing about having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He is the greater one. He is the stronger one. 
He is the Paracletos who can come and strengthen us when we find ourselves in a situation that is beyond our own intellectual or physical capabilities. It's simply outside of our control. So he shows up to show us what it means to have relationship with one who is stronger than we are. And so that word parakletos may also actually be translated intercessor. Now what do we mean by that word intercessor? When we speak of an intercessor, the simple way that we explain that is to say that an intercessor is one who stands in the gap. In other words, he is one who will present our cause before God. Let me put it to you this way. When I am weak and I am unable to present my cause before God, when I feel as though I am unable to approach him and speak to him, an intercessor is one who would show up with a spirit of compassion and empathy and pray for me when I am unable to pray for myself. Present my cause, speak on my behalf when I am unable to do so for myself. How awesome that is to have one who is stronger, who also understands how to present on my behalf. That is who an intercessor is. That is what having a relationship with the Holy Spirit is about. We can fellowship with Him and surrender those circumstances that's beyond our control. And He knows how to deal with that situation. When we turn over to the book of Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 26 to 28, the scripture again relates to the Holy Spirit being our intercessor. The scripture says that in our weakness, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. How does he help us? The scripture says that he makes intercession for us. And then it goes on to say that the one who knows the heart of man understands the prayer of the Holy Spirit because he prays in accordance with the will of God. Verse 28 says, He causes all things to work together for our good, those who are called according to his purpose. Now this text of scripture, this piece of scripture shows us God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit working together to cause all things to come together for your good. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. The discerner of the thoughts and the intents at the heart of man is the Word of God. That's Jesus Christ himself. And we are called according to his purpose, the purpose of the Father. So the relationship here is of the Holy Trinity working on your behalf when you are unable, incapable of doing so for yourself. There can be no greater one than this awesome God who chooses to step in to your situation, your circumstance, and make things work out for your good and most so in a time when you're unable to do so for yourself. The intercessor, the Holy Spirit showing up on your behalf, on my behalf. Jude, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude, but in verse 20, Jude says to us that we can build ourselves up in the most holy faith, and then he says that we pray in the Spirit. Now, the meaning that I want to relate to us today in that piece of scripture is what we call a positional truth. In other words, it is revealing to us what our position is because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And here, Jude is saying to us that our position through our relationship with God is that we are in the Spirit. That piece of scripture denotes that we can bring ourselves to a place of rest in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Your position, my position, because of Jesus Christ, because of God the Father sending the Holy Spirit to us, the position we are able to assume is a position of rest in the Holy Spirit. Why? 
How is it that we are able to come to a place of rest? That's because He is the stronger one, interceding on our behalf. So instead of letting the circumstances of life place pressure upon us, cause us to get into a frantic mode and not knowing what to do, Jude is saying, bring yourself to a place of rest in the Holy Spirit. Rest in that He is stronger than you are, the Parakletos. Rest in that He can intercede on your behalf. Pray when you don't even know how you ought to to pray. And when you bring yourself to that place of rest, then you find yourself in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. You're in the place of koinonia. You're in the place of communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with Him, one who is stronger than you. He'll stand up for you. He'll pray on your behalf. He'll speak and present your cause on your behalf and bring you to a place of rest in your life. I don't know what the circumstance or the challenge may be that you have in your life that makes you think that you are weak. You can't cope with this. You cannot deal. The circumstance has you under pressure. It is beyond who you are and what the measure of your control is. I invite you today Tap into this opportunity that Paul is saying is available to you and I. The opportunity is one of communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now when you commune with the Holy Spirit, He begins to change your life from the inside out. The scripture teaches us in the book of Galatians chapter 5 that there is the fruit of the Spirit. And it speaks of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Some may think that these are the softer elements of life, when in fact they are not. They are elements or fruit of the Spirit that allow our character to be strengthened. And so that is one way that the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He develops these fruit in our lives. On the other side, we see a demonstration of power or the works of the Holy Spirit. We see it manifest mostly in Acts chapter 2, but also in the life of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all of those who were sick and oppressed of the devil. That was the power of the Holy Spirit at work in and through him. Luke chapter 4, he says to us, that the Holy Spirit anointed him to set the captive free, liberate the oppressed, heal the brokenhearted, binding up their wounds. There is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There is the work of the Holy Spirit or the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you today and encourage you that when you come into fellowship with him, you are able to experience his work in your life. Experience the fruit of the Spirit in your life bringing you to a place of strong character, helping you to endure and have self-control, at the same time manifesting the power of God in your situation. As we approach Pentecost, child of God, I ask you to consider your relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is fully able and willing to show up in your presence and embrace you give you a full, genuine, holy embrace that can bring you peace and strengthen you at the same time. Will you invite Him into your home, into your life, to experience this relationship today? You don't have to wait for anything to change. He can show up right now in your presence and give you a holy embrace and raise you up to that place of strength and comfort again. I pray that you would allow Him to do so in your life. Let me speak this blessing over your life today as we draw to a close in our time of fellowship. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He be gracious to you, cause His face to shine upon you, and give you great peace.